Good evening. I'm joining you because I had such a busy day that by the time I got to my, uh, my home, uh, it's all darkness outside. And I've done this once before that is talked while I was in the dark and you could see shadows occasionally and you could uh, hear the gravel uh, or stone underneath my foot. But um, I, don't, I don't think that works. So we're doing a uh, sit and talk. And, and one of the reasons is because there are a couple of things going on that I think are worth commenting on. One of the most uh, dramatic, of course, is the conviction this afternoon of the Oath Keepers leader, uh, Stuart Rhodes. And uh, he's explained how he, he just there demonstrating he wasn't caring about what was going on. Well, now he's been found guilty of seditious conspiracy. And he's the first in the ongoing investigation, at least of those who were the intolerable insurrectionists on the ground. We still have not indicted or charged anyone like Trump or in his uh, circle of uh, corrupt minions. So that's where we stand now. Now, the significance of this charge is that technically our boy Rhodes could face uh, 25 years. And so it was uh, a little bit of a risk to take this offense, which some thought was harder to prove, but plainly was not. And I think that, uh, as is true in most cases, when a defendant takes the stand, they often remove some of the doubt immediately by the fact that making it real that they concede anything. You know, you were there is something, but then you were there and you had these emails and you had these conversations. And so that that hurts. Also, in his case, he had relationships with Stone and Flynn that appear to be plainly involved in this, but not uh, charged as of this date with doing anything despite the period of time since January 6, 2017. So uh, that's good news. But the other side of the story is that where are the charges against Trump and his corrupt corral of conspirators? And the answer is nowhere. What promises, promises. Now, yes, we have special counsel. Uh, Jack uh, Smith has been appointed, and but he's under the thumb of Garland Do-Nothing, who has failed to be anything but inert when it came to uh, prosecuting, uh, bringing to justice Trump or any of these high-level uh, people who cooperated, despite the fact that we seem to know the story, both from good journalism, from the fact that these people admit what they do often, and from the January 6th committee, and still we're treading water, saying, oh, it's coming, it's coming. We'll be at land soon. Don't you worry, we're going to be there. Well, you know, knock me over until that happens. It doesn't exist. And that's my concern, because this is what happens in these uh, political events. And the significance to America is that for us to say the law is not worth much and that some people really are above the law, soar high above the law. In this case, we're talking about Trump and the people who made it possible and necessary and conspired and cooperated so that he could try to overturn the election that he soundly lost. And that, that's, that's a significant thing. And we have seen in America the price we're paying for not enforcing the law on others. Now, I don't believe that the attorney general is operating on his own without the cooperation uh, of the president himself. I just, I just don't think it's possible. I guess it is. Anything is possible, but I don't think that is likely. And I believe that Garland probably wouldn't feel comfortable taking the Rip Van Winkle approach to this investigation if he didn't have the chief executive, the president, Biden, on his side. And, you know, we have people still saying what they said in testimony on the Hill. Michael Fanone was uh, beaten up badly. Uh, and he's an, He was an officer and he's written a book and he's been giving interviews. And basically he said, when are we going to have an accounting of the others? Because without an accounting of the others, the law doesn't mean that much in America. That's the real challenge. So those two coupled together, yes, it is good to prosecute for seditious conspiracy roads, but what about the others? What are we waiting for? Everybody in America feels they could probably stand up and give an opening or a summation of what's wrong here and what the penalties are. A first-year law student could try some of these cases. We always go to the Georgia case as the best example. You got Trump on tape basically asking for him to falsify the results of the presidential election in Georgia and overcome the number of votes that Biden got by which he beat Trump. And to add one more vote, 
so that he could say he won. I mean, the, the arrogance of the guy, the chutzpah. So anyhow, that's, that's one, one thing. I have other qualms with Biden. Although I support him as our president, I think he may have been the only person that could have beaten Trump. I mean, you know, you could go back and try to game it, but I think that's true. And he may be the only person, if Trump is the nominee, who could go against him again this time. But along the way, we forget our friends. And that is to say, there, uh, there are groups that I think we as Democrats care about because they don't necessarily have, if you will, the, the political muscle to have their rights heard and to meet their requirements and demands. Now, I'm not talking about the women now. I'm talking about the unions, working men and women. And I'm wor- talking about those uh, who are talking about a railroad strike and the freight railroad, because um, there was hope to have an agreement by December the 9th. Presently, there has been a vote on an interim agreement, and the interim agreement was turned down by four of the 12 unions, and the unions will stand together. If one strikes, they'll all strike. They have a joint, uh, as I understand, they have a joint strike uh, agreement. Now, years ago, I got to see uh, uh, the, the PATCO strike, which was the strike by federal employees who were not allowed to strike. And uh, when they did, Reagan fired them. Well, I happen to think that was a mistake, but that's what he did. Um, Because then he had no control over them. They were no longer employees. And at the time I was in private practice and my law firm, including more than myself, although I was the trial attorney, the, uh, uh, the, we advised the, 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 the different airlines not to f- have uh, the, the workers fired even though they were federal employees and weren't allowed to strike because it was going to be hard to put Humpty Dumpty together again, and it was. And they had a, uh, a germane issue, the air traffic controllers did, and that issue was, uh, was the current system for air traffic controllers safe for pilots and passengers and freight and so forth? And that was lost in the wash. Now, what is the issue here? One of the issues is that uh, this interim agreement doesn't provide for paid sick leave. Now, that's really important because these people work through the pandemic, and uh, a lot of them got sick, and a lot of and and a number died, and they weren't being paid, and they want that taken care of. There are other issues, of course, and they're not frivolous ones. So I started this thing saying, well, what about the Democrats? What are they doing and so forth? And the answer is they're going to side with the railroads and they're going to impose the last agreement that was voted down by the union. Now, on top of that, we have the White House cooperated in the bargaining of that interim agreement that the unions did not want. And so now... Biden is asking Congress to impose upon the parties, the railroads and the unions, the interim agreement that was expressly rejected by the unions. So uh, what, what is our concern about that? Our concern about that is that that's just not fair and that shouldn't happen. So uh, those are our issues right now. Uh, I'm getting an alarm like I'm supposed to do something and I don't know what it is, but I'll find out. And uh, I'm sorry we didn't get to walk today, and perhaps we will tomorrow. And uh, thanks for spending some time with me. I'll talk to you then. Bye-bye.